Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Ayanla Fix My Life. This is season six, episode 16. My hair is a little bit wet, so it's drying, so y'all will see the natural curliness of it all. Yes, the fan is on, so when y'all see, like, why she thinks she fancy? My fan is always on. I just don't have my hair down as much, so because it's always hot up under these lights. Anyway, I hope everyone had a great weekend. It's currently Sunday. Y'all see it's bright outside. Yes, I'm reviewing early or early in the day. You know, usually I do stuff at night. But, you know what I'm saying? I took a little, you know, break on Saturday and it's like, didn't do nothing. Um, But again, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Um, And do not forget to be an active subscriber, which just means, you know, come watch videos, comment here and there, you know, share the video, like the video. You know, I love my active subscribers. Um, also, do not forget to hit the notification bell because that lets you know when I have, I hate when it blow. It's just weird because it looks like, you know, alfalfa-ish and I'm not alfalfa. Um, but yeah, the notification bell lets you know when I have new videos up. And if you hit the notification bell already and um, you don't get notifications, sometimes you have to unclick it and then reclick it like to reset itself. So yeah, um, this episode of Ayala, I'm not going to go like word for word how I used to what they talk about. It was about these three women, okay? It was three females who had went to prison separately. They all ended up just being in the same prison and they became family of sorts. You know, they just bonded or whatever and became close in prison. It was Brandy who was 36 years old currently and she was sentenced to 10 years in prison um, because of a guy who she was dating uh, who was a drug dealer and she had a three-year-old son at the time that she left behind. We have Tai who was currently 31 years old she was sentenced to five years in prison um because of her drug dealing boyfriend and because he got charged they charged her with conspiracy so when he got indicted they got her ass too um and she left three kids well she left yeah three kids behind because she was pregnant with a child and had two other kids so yeah three kids and then we have matilda matilda is 65 okay she's a mother hen okay and you know she was sentenced to 30 years in prison um she says her son was selling drugs to feed the family and you know and she didn't want to snitch on her son so she went to jail for them i have it's something about that, that i'm gonna talk about a little bit later so Taiyi was kind of the first one they kind of talked about um you know she brings up how she never did anything with the drugs but she knew her boyfriend was a drug dealer um and she you know was with him in that lifestyle or whatever um they were living together and everything and then she brings up like i never touched the drugs at all never ever ever even though i was aware of what he was doing see i look real alfalfa ish um you know because it's crinkling up even though my hair is longer than that anyway so you know she then brings up how they were sleeping up in the, and she would sleep one night her and the kids he wasn't there um and the she heard someone kicking in the door and she said how she assumed it was someone coming for him you know in that because in that life that's what happens sometimes it's like i got up and ran out and i made my kids stay in the room and i went downstairs thinking if it's someone who want to do something to whoever they can do it to me and leave my kids alone and she said, I was relieved when I saw it was the police and not anyone else. I said, bitch, I'm never relieved to see the police unless someone just broke into my house and they're catching them. Um, so I was like, girl. So she brings up how um, she was used to that kind of stuff. She said, because when she grew up, she grew up in a crack house. Her house, she said, my house was a drug house, which means a crack house. So I'm like, this girl you know, grew up in a crack house, okay, now she basically with a drug dealer who probably selling crack or weed or heroin or whatever, um, she got multiple kids by this, well, she has at least one kid, I'm gonna say, by this man, um, because again, she was pregnant at the time, um, and she was happy that the police was the ones kicking her door in, and she said how it was normal for her, how her kids were not phased, she just, when well, she said, when I left, I told my kids, don't worry, mommy, be back, even though she didn't come back, well, she didn't come back, she couldn't even call them 
um, for two weeks because she got locked up. And she brought up how her son's birthday was two days away, how they were planning a whole birthday party. And when she called the, the kids, how her son said, well, mom, you missed my birthday party. Because, again, she was in jail for two weeks. Um, and it's just crazy to say, because she's like, you know, I knew what he was doing. So, um, it was okay with me. And then, because even though she was not a drug dealer herself, they just... They decided to indict her on conspiracy charges because she knew what he was doing. So that's like a a, 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 a tale for these girls who you date a drug dealer. You can go to jail too, mama. Even if you don't sell them or, or do whatever, you can definitely go to jail. And it's crazy because, you know, I dated a drug dealer before, twice, um, two separate guys or whatever. And even I wasn't thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? That's back when I was between the ages of 17, like 24 or whatever, um, when I dated two people who did that. And it's crazy to think, like, girl, that could have been you. You know what I'm saying? Like, girl, don't you don't you know that could have been you? But nowadays, I feel like there's no upside to dating a drug dealer. Because when you're selling drugs, it's you either going to end up in jail, dead, or just, you know what I'm saying, even worse. You could just be sitting around here just not making no money. Um, so it's like, I don't get why people these days date drug dealers. I'm like, because it can't be that lucrative, girl. Anyway, so we then have Brandy. Brandy said how her, the guy she met who was a drug dealer, she's like, when I met him or whatever, he was on the run from the police. I'm like, girl, so he was already a felon. You. Lord Jesus, she said she met him when he was on the run, and she ended up getting pregnant by him again while he was on the run from the police. And, you know, she says even though when she went away for, you know what I'm saying, dealing with this man who was selling drugs, um, and n none of, she didn't say what her charge was, and I didn't think to look it up, or maybe I just can't remember what it was, but she brings up how even now that she's out of jail, her son still feel like, <clears throat> no, she said she felt like she had been her son. Her son won't talk about it. Like he won't, he won't talk about it at all. Probably because he's a piss at your ass because you went away for that man. Um, so she brings up, bring up the date the police came to the house. She said, you know, the police was knocking on the door, and you know, she got. She said I was just nervous or whatever. So I called my parents. Like I called my mom, and my dad. And she said, my dad asked me, well, did they come in? And she said, no, they did not come in. And then she said, our dad told her, well, if they didn't come in, then they don't have, my hair looks crazy. If they didn't come in, then they don't have a search warrant. So just don't open the door, don't let them in. And her, Ayana was like, she laughed, like, oh, your father's a lawyer. She's like, no, my, my father was a drug dealer. I'm looking like, so again, Tae was raised in a, in a crack house. Okay, that's one thing. Then you had Brandy, who daddy was also a drug dealer when he was when she was younger. So that's just kind of what she liked. Um, so she says, growing up, I looked up to my father because, you know what I'm saying, he was a drug dealer. But however, he was always home. He took care of us. My mama was a stay-at-home mom. She was a housewife. She took care of us, too. Um, you know, he was always home. He wasn't gone a lot. Um... My mama didn't need whatever we were going on trips or whatever we went to private school so in her life um she is, is is like one of a million to where her father was dealing drugs and whatnot and he ain't in he wasn't in jail because she called him he was at home um and they had a good life when they were younger but at the end of the day did she pay for the sins of her father because her father was a whole drug dealer and maybe didn't go to jail but at the end of the day she ended up going to jail and she was sentenced to 10 years in prison um, so that's kind of crazy, but when she said I looked up to him, I, I was like, well, that's because that's what he showed you as if it was a good thing, and it kind of, and, and it really wasn't, and she brings up how, you know, she only date drug, it's like, I've only dated guys who sold drugs, I've never, I've never dated someone who was not a drug dealer, I'm looking like, girl, you was 36 years old, and you've only dated drug dealers, I'm like, for me, that is a sad thing to say, because do you not want more out of life, like, I, I always wonder what, you know, it's the things where I think before, you know, selling drugs was the way that some people back in the day was able to make money to do other things. You know, what I'm I feel like drug dealing just kind of it went from a, like I just want to make a little bit of money to, to do something else to let let this be my lifestyle. I'm looking like, why would you date multiple drug dealers? Like, I mean, because if you dated one. And I ain't work out. You go to another one. I'm not. You just had no effort or no thought to want to date anybody else but a drug. It is because it, it. She said it as if. Well, what else was I gonna date, girl? Anybody, a banker, a lawyer, a janitor, who, whoever, a zookeeper. I don't care. Date a man who builds clay. I don't know. But I'm like, when she said, I've only dated guys who were 
drug dealer. She said, I enjoyed the life. And then Ayala pointed out, like, you know, you like the life they gave you, but you did not like the consequences of that lifestyle. And she didn't because she ended up taking her ass to prison. Okay? And now it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Now, Ayala did have a moment to where she was saying to them, to both, with more, more, more to Brandy and Tyee, um, you know, y'all didn't have an issue with dating men who pump poison into their own neighborhoods. Now, that's a whole another conversation or whatever, because... Um, Everyone knows a drug dealer, one way or the other. Um, everyone, so it's like everyone knows of someone who pumped drugs into the community. Whether they were selling weed, crack, cocaine, it was a heroin, meth, pills, or whatever. Everyone knows someone who sells drugs of some sort to people. Um, but I don't feel like they're horrible people. You know what I'm saying? I think I think I, when I watch the TV show Snowfall and I think about the show and how they have the character Franklin, who was something you know crack to people, but he has no idea the effects it's going to have, the long lasting effects it's going to have on the community. So it's sometimes it's like a person selling a drug to somebody who is enjoying the high and still going about their day, but not realizing you making a whole ass addict. You know what I'm saying? You making a whole other. You, it's going to be a whole epidemic. And you have no idea. So, um, I feel like, again, in this day and age, I don't want to date a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Because I'm like, for what? Like, nothing can come of that. Nothing at all. And I feel like if, if a guy in this day and age is a drug dealer, in 2018, if your only means of, of funds and of, of to, get, to make money is to sell drugs, you are lazy. There are so many other ways to better yourself and to make money. So I, I agree with Ayana in, in the aspect of, you know, you were dating somebody who was doing something that was poisoning our people. But, um, again, this is stuff from like five, six, seven, eight years ago. So it was a little bit different back then. Like, I think that's when drug dealing and stuff was like tapering off and it wasn't as like, oh, I'm a whole, it's, it's different. Like, people don't really glamorize drug dealers now. Like, I don't know... In, like I don't be in the hood basically so I don't even when I was back in the hood back in the day um that's around the around 2000 ish okay that's when the 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 old he girl he he sell drugs girl, he, he do what uh now nah, I'm like so it's, it's just a different time you know what I'm saying but for them at that point in time that was normal so I'm like you can't really um judge them of dating someone who who did that okay um they bring up how both Brandy and uh, Tai um, had similar issues, and so that's how they ended up bonding in prison. They both were in prison for men they were with or whatever, for the fathers of their children. They both left children behind. Brandy, who left her one kid behind. Tai, who left three kids behind. Um, and they bring up how, you know, in prison, you don't have your family with you. In prison, you know, you become family with who's in prison. And I said that's true because I have people who I know that's in prison. And I don't have the time to talk to them, email them, and type, write them. And, and so it's just a lot to deal with. And I feel like nobody I know who's in there are innocent. Like, I, I personally don't know any innocent people who are in prison. The people who I will not take that back. I take that back. Um, well, not innocent in the aspect of they didn't do nothing. Okay? The people who I know who are in there, they did something, even if it isn't exactly what they're in there for. Their lifestyle still got them involved in what they're there for. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what I mean by that. And sometimes, if you keep your hands clean, it's a, it's a, some people we know are innocent and they go away even if they keep their hands clean you know you can keep your hands clean and still get fucked over in the system i completely get that that ain't what i'm saying what i'm saying is there are people who are innocent of robbing someone but they're guilty of murdering someone and you may be be in jail because you was there when it happened or it's someone who may be innocent of a bank robbery okay but they're guilty of goddamn convenience of robbery and so you it's, it's that kind of thing so um you have to realize how your choices is what can get you somewhere even if you didn't mean to be in prison like these women did not mean to be in jail but y'all was up here dating sleeping with them being with drug dealers who was breaking the law okay and in some places the police would just be assholes and take you to jail too so that was the kind of thing about that so and they with with brandy and with and Tyee, 
you know, connected on their similarities, they found a mother figure in Matilda. So, Matilda went to jail when she was 45 years old. Um, at that point in time, she had 10 kids. Now, see, it's the thing, because uh, Ayala specific things that were how old were you when, when you went to jail? I was 45. She said, okay, not the time, how many kids did you have? She said, 10. I had 10 kids. Um, and she was, again, she was sentenced to 30 years in prison. I say, bitch, that's a lot. Okay, that's a whole lot. That's 30. Oh, well, I would. <laughs> take me Jesus I would I could not even you know I couldn't even fathom that thought okay so she brings up how the reason she went to jail was because she did not snitch on her sons who were selling drugs to help provide for the family and so I know like we know that you know the money they were giving you was like from drugs like it was okay accepting drug money she said yes absolutely I was I knew where the money came from and you know what I'm saying I was basically in survival mode she's like you just like um she asked, like, you know, have you, have you ever went to bed hungry? And y'all said, yes, I have went to bed hungry. A lot of times I have done that. And then she said, but I never sold drugs. And I feel like Ayanna has to know that some people do things when they, you people sell drugs, people become prostitutes. It's, it's, it's things that people do that shouldn't be their first option, but they do it. So I feel like you can't be acting like, well, you know, I, I didn't sell drugs. You didn't, but even if you went and got drunk and you stayed homeless, I mean, it's the same that everybody do different things. You know, she didn't want to be hungry no more, so she let her sons do what her sons did. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's her choice. It was her life to live or whatever. So she brings up, I was in survival mode and it was for my children. I, you know, we were taking, it was, it was to take care of my kids. Now, um, it was weird because for me, I felt like, well, you were 45 with 10 children. Um, what are, where are the fathers? Like, at what point did you realize that you need to stop having kids? Because if you have ten kids that you can't take care of, to the point where two of your kids has to go and sell drugs to, to take care of the kids, you were unfit mother. Like you were unfit. You can't if you have ten kids. Cause at, it's the thing when you say you know how many kids too many. Too many kids too many kids. You can't take care of them. And at this point in time, at some point before she got to number ten, she couldn't take care of them kids. Like can't nobody tell me. Oh my God. Like. You have to be very, very rich to take care of 10 kids, okay? It takes a... Kids are expensive, okay? Diapers and formula alone is expensive. So, having 10 children... Do you even have space for 10 kids? Like... Like, I mean... I'm just saying. 10 kids is a lot. My mother with my grandparents and my mama said it was seven like mom has like six brothers I can't think I, the number throws me off on my bio father's side there was also six kids on my dad's side my dad who passed away um he was also one of like five or six kids so I do know at a point in time there were married couples who just kept having kids and kept having kids but they were taking care of them kids. Like, even if you was a little bit struggling, you were still able to maintain what you can maintain. Um, and I think that the difference between you be, you being in a committed relationship with your wife and y'all just keep having kids and y'all are maintaining those kids. Um, but once it gets to the point to where you are a single mother and you can't take care of your 10 kids to the point where the kids, your sons have to go sell drugs, that's a problem for me. Like, I think that should be a problem for you too. And I get she was in survival mode, but I'm looking like, girl, that was a lot of people. Anyway, so we do see how Ayanna brings up to them how, you know, they have to realize some things, um, some, they need to realize some truths within themselves. In order to change the things that's going on since they have gotten out of jail. Um, she tells them how they cannot hold on to this distorted reality. No, this distorted narrative about what happened. Because if they do, they'll stay broke. Um, and it's a thing to where I felt like what Ayanna was saying was. Y'all have these reasons as to why y'all was with these men. Or these reasons as to why y'all went to jail. And it's not necessarily the truth. It's y'all distorted narrative to make it seem as if, well, I had no other option. So, you have to kind of let that go to be able to say, well, you know what I'm saying? I did have options. I just didn't choose the right options. Like, maybe I should not have had 10 kids and let two of my kids 
or however many of my sons sell drugs and maybe I should not have dated this man who was a drug dealer and on the run from the police be my man and had kids by him because that was a bad decision. Maybe I should not have been laying up with some man who was a drug dealer simply because I grew up in a crack house. It's a thing of you have to realize what you did to put yourself in that situation and be honest about what happened. Um, so Matilda, Matilda does get a bit upset when she hears that Ayana saying look stuff like that, and she's like, you know, I don't, I don't know why I'm here now. You said I don't like what you're saying, and she she said because she felt as if Ayana was trying to was trying to tell her in her heart what she did, and she says, no, I'm telling, you, I'm not telling you what was in your heart. I'm just trying to tell you some truths that no one may have told you before. Because they may, maybe did not love you enough to be this honest with you. And I said, well, that's a good word. I said, that's a good word within herself. You know, we bring up, when well, we see Ty E. Uh, and Ty E is the youngest one because she's 31. Um, she's currently 31. And she brings up how, for her, when she got found guilty, um, she was lucky enough to where the judge allowed her to turn herself in later because she was pregnant with her her, her young child. And so, Yana brought up how your baby was doing and all that stress of you going to prison for four years, no, for, for five years. She had five years. So she got five years or whatever. She says, when I, I left my son, he was one month old. When I came home, he was almost five. So she was gone for about, you know, almost four years. Um, so I think for her, it was also lucky that she was, the judge was nice enough to let her not, you know, have to go right in while she was pregnant. So, okay, you send this to five years, you got, you got to turn yourself in and like, four months or whatever or whatever the amount of time was um for her to have her baby and then she brought up how her youngest son isn't doing too good now now she didn't elaborate on that that meant um how he's mad at her how they don't have a connection or if he maybe has some kind of mental physical emotional issues that he went through over five years the four four ish years that she was gone um but she just says that he isn't doing good now um we didn't even find out that for matilda because she asked her she asked I'll tell you that, like how old like your, was your mom alive when you went to went to prison and she said no my mom passed away when she was 53 she worked herself to death um and that was hard for me to watch too um and then I just look up how they all kind of don't know who they are they all do seem a little bit lost in translation within their own selves um Tae seems very 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 sheltered and young minded and like she's still a baby in her heart you know what I'm saying um Matilda to me seems very much so like she's still struggling to find her own truth. Like I feel like it's something in her. I feel like she's lying. Um, yeah, I feel like she's lying about something, and she's trying to figure out what's the truth in her head so that she can say it without you know what I'm saying coming off kind of crazy. So we bring up that like, you see. Uh, She talks to Matilda. That's what she did. She talked to Matilda. Did she talk to Brandy already? Oh, she talked to Brandy next. Um, she talked to Matilda, who said that there's more. Um, oh, she said she's there because she wants to be more connected to her family. She brings up how since she's been home, there's a disconnect between her and the kids. She's she like, I feel like my daughter um, says to me, I don't have any feelings or whatever, but I do. You know, so I feel uh, guilty. I feel like I'm a failure, but I have all these different feelings. But she's so upset with me that she can't hear me say how I feel. I mean, I think if your mom go away, because again, she must not have done the whole 30 years. Um, she made it in 20 because she went around when she was 45. She's not 65. And it seemed like they all kind of came home around the same time. So, you know, but again, this is part one. Part two comes out next week. So I don't know how long she did. We just know how. Um, but I don't think any of them did their full time. Okay, but again, whatever. So you know, I can feel that her daughter could be upset because Mama went to jail for brother for selling drugs, and then she left us destitute. Okay, because the Mama gone and you was, was already struggling. How much are we doing without you here at all? Like that could be how she thought. You know, she brings up how when she was younger, well, no, that how her mom left her with her grandmother. Because she, I was three days old, and my mother left me with her mother because she was in college. She was 19 years old, a college student. She basically changed the family getting pregnant with me. Um, so I felt like throughout my life, she loved me in a different way. She loved me in a funny way. Um, and again, we don't know the reasons for that because she, she did not want to elaborate that. But she does bring up that her mother raised her sister. So it's a thing to where if mom had me first, 
and gave me a grandma and then she went ahead and had my sister and kept my sister like what made my sister better than me for her to keep her and not keep me so that can also be reason to why she had so many kids because her mama get her mother gave her away so I'm gonna have all my kids I ain't gonna give them away I don't, I don't want any of my kids to feel like I didn't want them how my mother made me feel so that can be what, what was going through her head um she brings up but when her mom passed away even though they had a you know a different kind of relationship how her mother was dying and she was calling out her name and her bed and her you know her deathbed so y'all don't bring up well that might not be a good thing and i'm like well, y'all but that might not be a bad thing either like i don't think any parents who was passing away and know they're dying to be calling out for the child who maybe they feel regrets um of not maybe loving them the right way i don't think you know this one, she said, that might not be a good thing. I said, well, how do you, like, I, don't, I didn't like the comment. I didn't, but it was what it was. Um, she then brings up how even she was 15 years old when she got pregnant and had her first child. She said she was pregnant by a man who was 25. This is my mom. Hello. Hello, mother. Hello, what are you doing? Recording a video. Oh, sorry. I had a question. For you, but I'll call you later. What you recording? Well, just send me a t um, um, your own thing. You can say hi to people. Oh, hello, everybody. Thank you for watching and supporting. All right, I'll talk to you later. Uh, just text me a question. I can read it, and I'll. No, no, we'll talk later. Peace. All right, love you. Love you too. So, um, yeah, she brings up how she was. Uh, 15 years old when she got pregnant her first child and she was pregnant by a man who was 25 years old so we know that ain't legal um she brings up how she felt like she was looking for love and a father because she felt lonely and lost her whole life so that's why she you know kind of ran away at 15 well no she got pregnant at 15 and which made her run away to be with that man who was 25 years old um and it made her cry you know what i'm saying it made her cry because you know as ayala said to her like you probably never had a chance to release any emotions from when you were a 15 year old kid you know not feeling loved by anybody you know and looking for love in all the wrong places and found it in that grown ass man and then you know what i'm saying you grew up too fast like you was you, you grew up at 15 and you maybe didn't want to do that and she cried she sat there and she cried um and i felt like she was crying for her 15 year old self i feel like sometimes people do have to realize when you have kids so young and you have to grow up you do lose a bit of your childhood so it's okay to you know when you, you when you have that moment of realization that you you know let out whatever emotions you have about about um growing up so fast and like maybe losing your childhood you know and and, and feeling lost and feeling unloved and feeling those different emotions so that was cool to see too now when she talks to brandy um <laughs> Ayala, <laughs> Ayala talking to Brandy. I'm like, girl, Ayala, girl. So she asked her, you know, have you ever really loved a man? You know what I'm saying? Or did you just love what they could do for you? And it made her think like, what? What? How? What do you mean by that? So she said, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I do know I love my child's father. And, you know what I'm saying, I, I, we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. You know what I'm saying? I do know that. And then she said, but the other ones, it probably was what they did for me. So Ayana then asked her, well, what's the difference between that and being a hooker? I said, oh, Lord Jesus, you didn't call this girl a hoe. Uh, or a prostitute. Okay. And then she kind of was taken aback by the question. She was like, well, you know, I wasn't sleeping with random men for money. <laughs> Ayana then said, well, a hoe is a hoe is a hoe. You think I'm a hoe? <laughs> hey, girl, Lord Jesus. She said, well, no, she said, I'm asking you, you know, what did, what does being a hoe mean to you or what does it mean? Um, and she said, you can sleep, you can, she said, you can sleep with one man for money and it can be considered, you know, being a hoe or being a hooker. And she said, for me, I feel like a hooker is the person who's on someone who's sleep with multiple men for money, you know, on the street corners. And that is a definition of it. Um, so she asked her, plain out, you know, what do you call a woman who was with a man because of what he can do for her? What do you think that is? Because that's what you were doing. You were with men who could do something for you for monetary gain. So what do you call that? So I'm like, you call the girl a hoe. You call her a whole prostitute. Like a whole prostitute all up in these, I mean, I, I, she's a picky hoe. 
Okay, Jesus fix it. Okay, because it's a thing of she picked and chose, picked and chose, picked whatever. She picked who she wanted to be with. So she, if she was a hoe, she's a picky one, and that's the best hoe to be, I guess. You know, she brings up how yes, I did pick who I wanted to be with based on what they could do, for, who could take care of me. And I would tell them what I wanted, and if they can do it, you know what I'm saying, we'll be together. And she said, and you you would sleep with them, right? And she said, well, yeah. She was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? That's. She said, well, that's okay. I've done that too, so it's okay. She said, but you need to realize that your father taught you that was okay for you to be with someone who can do things for you. I see that two different ways. Because for one, everyone is with someone based on what they can do for the other person. Um, because I, I don't want to be with a man who can't do nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need to at least, like, I, I I have to like you for one, yes. But I'm not going to be with you and you just sitting around doing nothing. Like, you need to be able to help me pay these bills. Like, it's give, that's what a relationship is. But I also get what she meant was you wasn't even going into it looking for relationship stuff. You was going into it looking for what can I get out of it. Like, I'll be with him. I can fuck him or whatever. I can be with him. But what will I get out of the situation of being with this person? So, in a way, she was hoeing. But she was just being picky. She was picking and choosing who she wanted to be with to help her do what she needed to do. So, you know what I'm saying? It was, I, I can see it both ways. But also, it's not prostitution per se. Because she dated these men for however long time. Anyway, she also bring up, like for her, it was hard for her too. Because her father passed away while she was in prison. Um, and she said she always feels, she feels guilty because... Her father tried so hard to not have her be in that kind of lifestyle, and she didn't anyway. I mean, you cannot do it anymore. And I don't see her not doing it anymore, um, which is kind of the weird thing. And I'm like, girl, you need to fix it because, you know, it's just like you don't have to keep doing that. And I mean, Brandy, she's the one about it. Anyway, we then see all three women together again, and Ayala brings up how y'all don't even realize how... Even though y'all were strangers, y'all were drawn to each other in ways that y'all didn't even know. Y'all y'all did not even recognize that y'all were seeing things in the other one that was also a part of your own life. She brings up how for Brandy, um, Brandy's mom was 16 years old with a 31-year-old man. And she says, so for Brandy to not know or not, not to consciously know that Matilda, who she now looks like as a mother figure, was 15-year-old, was 15 years old. With a 25 year old man back in the day she's like so in a way you pick someone who was similar to your mom and you did not even know it you know she said like, you basically recreated her your mother in her um and didn't and just did not realize it and i'm like well that's you know okay i get that or whatever we then see a little thing with the doorbell rings okay like ding dong ding dong little cute little doorbell um ty even says i don't like stuff like that i like her what? And I, I had a rewind. Like, what did she say? She said, I don't like stuff like that. And I'm like, what, the doorbell? Like, y'all don't have doorbells when you stay up? But whatever. You know, it's like a fake cop or whatever comes in. I thought it was a PO off, like the parole officer. Because maybe because they was all there together, they had to like make sure it was on the up and up. But I'm like, no, it was an a exercise that Ayala had to wear. She had him kind of reading off like fake warrants for different things, like, you know what I'm saying, child endangerment or child ab abandonment or, um, um, misrepresentation of yourself. These these different life things, and so it's gonna, next episode is going to be a, a court of life, where the warrant, the fake warrant that she had, they're going to have to defend themselves based on those um, fake charges. So that's what's going to happen on um, episode two that we could see next week. Um. So. I think that would be interesting. I, I do. I do think that would be interesting. Um, we do see that it's, it's the following morning. Okay, now the following morning, um, they're at like the little, the, the, little, the table to eat or whatever, and you do see them all like sitting. Like it was, it was weird how they all were sitting the exact same. And then Yana brought up how y'all are sitting as if y'all are still in prison. Like y'all only have so much space. Y'all real like contained. And you know they it was food on the table and they didn't eat it. And it's like y'all can have food, like y'all can. And they say yes. Yeah. So oh, okay, okay, okay. And they bring up how even though they're home, it's hard for them to get acclimated to not being in prison. The one girl, I think it was Brandy, either Brandy or Ty, you said how you know in prison they had like four p.m. count. 
she's like, so sometimes she when she's home, she realizes it's four p.m. and I don't have to be sick. I don't have to. I don't have to be counting right now. Um, and how humiliated and, and degraded it was after just standing there like people. You know, it was prison life. Prison life. Um, and how they're they're still adjusting to not being in prison anymore. Um, she didn't kind of ask them what did they want to be before they went to prison. And Tae brings up how she wants to be an obstetrician, a, a whole doctor, a whole doctor. And y'all say a girl living in the crack house wanted to be a doctor. She said, so what happened that made that not happen? And she kind of got a little bit emotional saying how, you know, I just felt like I wanted to be a part of stuff. And then things happened. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to hang out with my friends. And so I knew I could I said I knew I could manipulate my mom because she was always high, and it was a it was a real, it was a, a honest moment that she said like I knew, I knew what I was doing when I asked my mama to put me in school uh, with my friends like in the hood or whatnot, um, because she wanted to hang out. She wanted to hang out with her friends, do hood right things, what she wanted to do, um, and she said she kind of got deeper than that. Um, cause Anna kept asking, like, well, what was the real reason you, that you just kind of stopped? Like, when did you, when did you give up on yourself? Which made her cry even more. Um, and she just said, you know, I felt like I was really, really young, around, around 14, 15 years old. Um, and I did it because I felt like me being a doctor was too big. It was too much for me. Um, you know, two of a, a again, a little girl, 14, 15 years old lived in the crack house, you know what I'm saying, her mom was drunk out on drugs, so how can I be a doctor, how can I do that, and she even admits how it was more of also for like no one would be able to help her, no one would be there to help push her, and so she just gave up on herself because she just had no one else, and that's sad that so many other kids and little girls and little boys feel that way because there is no support system, I feel like that's the reason for my nephew, we are so supportive of him, because we never... DJ thinks he can be anything he wants to be, and he knows for a hundred percent fact that if we, whatever he wants to be, besides a drug dealer, any good thing that he wants to be, he one hundred percent has the, the backing of his whole family, and that's a beautiful thing. Like we should need, we need to pour into our children more of more support, like more and more support. If you are, a, if you have a nephew, a cut, or whoever, support the kids in your immediate family as much as you can. To pour love into them, okay? So they will never be a 14 year old person wanting to be a doctor and give up on themselves and fuck around and end up in jail. You ever seen what's with a drug dealer? Just don't do that. It's, oh Lord, just too much. At this point in time, they all kind of crying, remembering how they kind of just at one point gave up on themselves and ended up in the, the predicament that they are in. Um, Matilda brings up how she understands that, you know what I'm saying, how hard it is because she's like, I'm just, I was. She said, when you're going, when you're going through that and, and, and living your life, it's you die a little bit each day because your whole life is about, oh, I got to go to work to make money, to pay, to pay bills, buy food, to, to just to, to, to sustain yourself. So that can be very hard. Um, and you have to do things that you don't want to do, like people who you don't like. There's all the things that people go through. Like, you don't like your boss, but you have to be nice to your boss. Or you don't like your landlord, but you can't punch him in the face because it's where you live. You hate paying bills, but if you don't pay bills, you'll be homeless. You're doing all these things that you really don't want to do, but you have to do it to just to live life comfortably, okay? Um, so it was, it was kind of crazy. They all bring up how um, no one taught them how to be a woman or that life could be much more than the little drug dealer's girlfriend or whatever. And that's true. You know, that's very, very true. I'm lucky enough to where my parents instilled in me there is more to life. Even though I had that whole crazy youngness of, of, of my, you know, in my 20s and my 10 years or whatever, through all of that, my parents still never let me go. They never let me get, you know what I'm saying, too far out to where I couldn't come back. I could have easily been any of these women in jail dating the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Who was a whole foot dude. You know what I'm saying? I could have, but they kept, even though I was, you know, thotting and bopping and he's taking out or whatever, I had a stable enough home environment that I never went too far off left of that. It just took me some time to get back on the track. Anyway, um, Ty even brings up how, you know, once she got home, she's like, I just feel like sometimes that I'm just giving so much of myself. I feel like I'm giving too much because I feel guilty. And it's kind of hard for me to not give whatever because I've been gone for so long. And Brandy brings up how that's what her parents did too. 
they would give her stuff to make her feel better about them not being there and it's like okay that's another connection y'all have to where now Ty's giving too much and Brandy can remember being given too much just to compensate for it and then you know Ayala brings up how you know you can't make up the time that you were gone you just it's impossible to make up for that time you you can't keep crucifying yourself based on the the the, the mistakes you made before and y'all just need to stop and keep living life or whatever and that's true um or what they have to do if you ask me and the episode goes off we see i'm my hair will be up in a bun in the next video um <laughs> we see uh they bring um matilda's one of her daughters there okay her daughter name is keisha who's 28 and you know she like no our family's a mess it's just so much going on um she brings up how her and her sister um was abandoned when they mind went to jail and you know she then says that she's actually number 11 she's the 11th child of 12 and the other said but your mama said that y'all got she got 10 kids she's like no she has 12 but i feel like ayana asked her how many kids does she have when she went to prison i said did she have more kids after she went to jail so that's what i'm kind of wondering like how that's gonna come into play and what's gonna happen with that but she do bring up how um Someone had a drug problem with her mom. Jail. I don't know if she was saying that the brothers had a drug problem. I don't know if she was saying that if maybe one of the other kids had a drug problem. I don't know if she said her mama had one because they bleeped out with the name she said. And somehow we have to wait until the following episode to see what a person actually said. So somebody had a drug problem before Matilda went to prison for her, her son. So we have to see who that is and what it is. But again, I told you, I think she lied about something. So I'm pretty sure that will come out in episode two that comes on next week but that is my whole review oh my god 40 minutes i hope y'all enjoyed <laughs> comment below your comments about the episode or about my review and i'll be back for another one later peace